saying that. So this must not be real. It, it's really, in my mind, it's a crime what's happened to us. And to, you know that we've really been abandoned by our regulatory agencies. I told my family that I was going to end my life because I couldn't bear one more day of these symptoms. I'm glad I didn't end my life, but I still sometimes feel like this is a rough way to live, even the way I am now. My name is Mona Hasegawa. I'm 42 years old. And um, before the COVID vaccination, um, I was very active with the kids. No matter where I go, I'm not getting the help that I need. Right? Um, and then also being scared that I'm not, if I'm gonna die, not being sure. And just not being able to be the mother that I used to be. If we try to talk about it on uh, social media, you get banned. People don't know we even exist. Some of these people, like, some of the people, they don't know we exist. I'll talk to my friends and they'll be like, oh, we never heard of anything like that. Well, how do you not, when I'm in a group of like thousands and thousands of people who are complaining, they're suicidal, I don't know what to do. You know, I'm six months out and I tell these new vaccine injured people, okay, um, you know, things are gonna start getting better, but I don't know if things are gonna start getting better. Care worker who wouldn't submit. And then the other part that they left out was all the people that you're about to meet right now. Broadcast. Julia, Angela, Angelina, Bree, Nikki, I don't want to leave anybody else, Kirsten, you're about to meet, they're just a fraction. These women represent a tiny fraction of the people who have been hurt by the vaccines. These are the people that stood there in the hospitals and in the ER and all over and they treated people when everyone else was hiding, right? I mean, half the federal government isn't even back at work now. The teachers unions don't even get me started, right? So when they were hiding, and some of them are still hiding, these people were risking their lives. And now that they're injured, they had faith. They didn't believe that we'd be lied to. And so some had volunteered for clinical trials, and all of them said, okay, because they were threatened into doing it. And that is wrong on every single level. And with them, the only guy on stage, the token male, is Lieutenant Colonel Pete Chambers. He won't tell you this, so I'm gonna tell you. He's a Green Beret, got a purple heart. I think it was Afghanistan. He served in Afghanistan and Iraq, shot in the lung. So I'm gonna give it over to them now. I just wanted you to know about them. I've been talking to them. These are the stories that the media is holding from you. In any universe, these would be stories that you'd be watching on 60 Minutes. These would be stories that the networks would be fighting over, that the New York Times would be doing six-page spreads, and they're not, and that's wrong. Behind me are my fellow healthcare workers. These men and women are the ones who stepped up when the pandemic hit. While most of the world isolated at home, we didn't. Like many, I felt the pressure to do my part. Within a week of my second Moderna mRNA vaccine, I was hospitalized, intubated five different times, I had a feeding tube, a hole placed in my throat so I could breathe, a hole in my lower abdomen to be able to urinate, life lighted five different times, two different states, spent over a hundred days in the hospital, over one million dollars in healthcare expenses were billed to my insurance, and I have been the lucky recipient of thousands of dollars of medical bills. When I look in the mirror, I don't recognize the woman I see. With tubes and holes, hair was falling out, bruises all over as if I just lost a fight, muscles atrophied, a face rounded from steroids to prevent my body from attacking itself, once a strong and independent and adventure-loving woman is now a woman who can barely stand and breathe. I worked my entire life to get to where I was, financially stable and in a job I loved, but one shot changed it all. Here's the love of my life who will now read some of my speech to give me a break.
She's now 14 months post vaccine and we still have more questions and answers. Dr. Anthony Fauci, can you look at her and our kids and tell us why their mom must suffer with ans no answers and that the vaccine is safe and effective? President Biden, why is her life and the lives of those standing behind us not worthy of any help to fund research and compensation programs for the injured? You have abandoned us. Watching my fiance go through this, I realize medical science has been hijacked and has been puppeteered by money, politics, and big pharma. Choice is being replaced by mandates. When, when we must be bribed or face consequences, that is not choice, it's coercion and tyranny. I've seen the tears of my fiance and heard the stories of others. Death, injury, and suicide from these vaccines, yet we are still ignored. President Biden, Fauci, FCDC, FDA, how many more deaths do you have to be responsible for before you start listening and responding? Social media platforms censor us. Media outlets say we share misinformation when we share our stories. We are ashamed for the entertainment of others. To everyone listening today, don't be silenced. Your silence is giving them consent. You are not crazy. You are not as rare as this world may make you feel. I challenge you to speak up. With numbers comes strength, and with unified voice, it becomes hard for them not to hear us, hear, hear our cries. The government, government is not helping us, so we ask you to help us. Just text REACT, that's R-E-A-C-T, to 50155 to donate to the medical fund, and 100% will go to the vaccine injured. Please, every dollar helps. I, Nikki Holland, am vaccine injured, and I promise you, this healthcare worker, this physical therapist, this 38-year-old mom of three, this small town girl from rural Tennessee is not giving up. I will not be silenced. I will not be ignored. I will not comply. I will not back down. From Los Angeles, California to Washington, D.C., hear my story and hear our plea. Thank you, thank you.